Shocking your pool can solve so many problems. Water looking cloudy or hazy, add shock. Starting to turn green, shock it. Strong chlorine smell, yeah, it's actually time to shock. But how do you know what type of shock to use and how much to add? When done incorrectly, shocking not only wastes time and money, but can also damage your pool. Hi, I'm Matt from Swim University, and here's everything that you need to know about how pool shock works, which type to use, and how to add it to your water. So first, what does shocking actually do? Shocking your pool means adding a concentrated dose of chlorine to the water. This quickly spikes your free chlorine levels to overwhelm and kill contaminants like algae and bacteria. It also breaks apart used up chlorine, also known as combined chlorine or chloramines. This reactivates your existing chlorine and gets rid of that chlorine smell, which is caused by chloramines. Now the goal of shocking is to reach what's called breakpoint chlorination. This means raising your free chlorine levels by at least 10 times the amount of your combined chlorine in the water. And if you're not sure how to calculate your combined chlorine, check out our other video. But essentially, you're super sanitizing the water to kill anything that your regular chlorine levels might be struggling to handle. Shocking can also mean adding a non-chlorine oxidizer to the water. This doesn't directly kill contaminants and it won't raise your free chlorine, but it does oxidize organic contaminants and break apart combined chlorine. Now, regular shocking can keep your sanitizer active in the water and clear up any early stage algae. I recommend shocking your pool at least once a week during the swimming season, especially if it's getting heavy use or there's been intense weather. So, which shock should you use? Well, it depends on what kind of pool you have and what your water looks like. So here are the different types of shock and when to use them. Number one is calcium hypochlorite shock, also known as Cal Hypo Shock. Now, Cal Hypo Shock is the most powerful chlorine shock available with about 65 to 75% available chlorine. It must be added at night because it's unstabilized and that means it'll get burned off by the sun's UV rays. It also has a high pH, so it'll temporarily raise your pH levels. Because it's so potent, you'll need to wait at least eight hours before swimming and retest your water to make sure that your chlorine levels have dropped back down to about three parts per million. It's best used for treating algae outbreaks, weekly maintenance in high use pools, and opening your pool for the season. It's not recommended for saltwater pools because the calcium in the shock can build up in your salt cell, and smaller pools under 10,000 gallons because it can be too much chlorine, and fiberglass pools because high calcium levels can cause discoloration. It's usually okay for vinyl liners, but with some caution. Cal Hypo can bleach the liner if the granules settle on the pool floor and stay there for too long. You can pre-dissolve the shock in a bucket before adding it to your pool or brush it around so it doesn't settle. By the way, if you need more help with chemicals and how to add them, or you just want all of this information in one place, Check out the Pool Care Handbook. It covers everything that you need to know about water chemistry for every single type of pool. You can check out the links below to get a copy for yourself. Number two is sodium dichlorshock. Dichlorshock typically has about 56 to 62% available chlorine. The sodium base helps it dissolve quickly in the water faster than Cal Hypo Shock. It also comes with cyanuric acid or CYA or stabilizer, and this prevents the chlorine from breaking down in direct sunlight. That means it can be added during the day. But like Cal Hypo, you typically need to wait at least eight hours before swimming and retest your chlorine levels first. Now, Dichlor Shock also has a more neutral pH than Cal Hypo Shock, but your pH may drop slightly after using it. It's best used for saltwater pools since there's no calcium, sensitive pool surfaces like fiberglass or vinyl since it's fast dissolving, and treating algae or cloudy water. It is not recommended for pools high in CYA over 50 parts per million since dichlor will raise your cyanuric acid levels. Number three is non-chlorine shock, also known as oxidizer or potassium monoprosulfate. It doesn't contain chlorine, but it works great to break up contaminants and chloramines. Non-chlorine shock also won't affect your calcium or your CYA levels. Now this is best used for weekly maintenance to break apart combined chlorine, when you wanna swim quickly after shocking, and you can check the directions on the package, but usually you only need to wait about 20 to 30 minutes. All pool types, non-chlorine shock works in any type of pool. When you don't wanna raise your other levels like chlorine, cyanuric acid, or calcium. Now, it is not recommended for treating algae or cloudy water because it doesn't directly kill algae and contaminants, so you wanna go for a chlorine shock instead. Number four is liquid chlorine, also known as sodium hypochlorite, also known as bleach. Liquid chlorine contains 10 to 12.5% available chlorine. Now, I'm talking about liquid chlorine that's made for pools, not household bleach, which only has about 5% chlorine. Liquid chlorine is unstabilized, so it can be added at dusk or night. 
It dissolves quickly and doesn't add calcium or CYA to the water. However, it does have the highest pH of all the types of shock, so it will raise your pH levels temporarily. Now this is best used for smaller pools under 10,000 gallons because it's less powerful and easier to control the dosing, or when you want to avoid adding calcium or cyanuric acid. It's not recommended for larger pools because it's much heavier compared to granular shock and you'll need a lot of it to shock the water. It's also not recommended for long-term storage because liquid chlorine has a short shelf life, so you wanna buy it fresh when you need it. Okay, so how much shock should you add? A regular dose of shock is one pound of shock if it comes in granular form, or one gallon of liquid for every 10,000 gallons of water. This is in addition to whatever regular chlorine you add to your water. A regular dose of chlorine shock works well if you've had a lot of swimmers or you need a lot of extra sanitizing. A dose of non-chlorine shock works well to break up any combined chlorine without raising your free chlorine levels. But you'll need to shock more if you have cloudy water or algae. Now for cloudy water or even light green algae, you wanna use a double dose of chlorine shock. For dark green, mustard, or black algae, you wanna use a triple or even a quadruple dose of shock. Now be sure to check out our other video on fighting algae if you need more help. Finally, here's how to add shock to the water the right way. Step number one is you wanna test and balance your pH. Good pH helps your shock work more effectively. This step isn't absolutely necessary, but it helps. It's okay if your pH is on the lower side since cal hypo or liquid chlorine is gonna raise it. Step number two, you wanna check your filter pressure. If it's 10 PSI above normal, clean or backwash your filter before adding shock, especially if you have algae or cloudy water. Step three is to brush your pool. You wanna give your surfaces a quick brush to dislodge any algae clinging to the walls. Step number four is you wanna add shock to your pool. Now for granular shock, you wanna walk around the pool while adding it to the water and add it in front of the return jets with the pump running. If you notice any settling on the pool surfaces, brush it around to help it dissolve quickly. For liquid shock, you can just walk around the pool, adding it directly to the water, or you can pour it in front of one of your return jets. But I have to warn you, do not add shock directly to your skimmer. This can damage your pool equipment, or if you have a chlorinator, it can literally cause an explosion. Yeah. Step number five is you wanna run your filter. So you wanna keep your pump and filter running for at least eight hours after adding chlorine shock. Now, if you're using non-chlorine shock, you only need to wait about 20 to 30 minutes. The next day, you wanna check your filter again. It may need cleaning or backwashing, and you always retest your water before swimming to make sure that your chlorine is back in range. And if you want more help with chemistry and weekly care, please check out the pool care handbook at swimu.com book, or by using any of the links below. That's it. Thanks again for watching and happy swimming.